Welcome to Denver Parks and Recreation at Home. My name is Ian Ferguson. I'm here with my daughter, Mac. And today we are going to discuss and demonstrate a lot of baseball and softball drills that can be done, again, at home, in your backyard, at a local park. These drills are uh, both for softball and baseball. As we know, baseball and softball are very similar sports. So as we go through throwing, fielding, and hitting, these will all apply to both baseball and softball. When we get to our pit pitching portion of the video, those will be a little more individualized because pitching for baseball is overhand and pitching for softball is underhand. Um, we do recognize that there are a lot of philosophies out there when it comes to, to different techniques for both of these sports. Our drills are really going to be focus, focused on uh, the fundamentals of the sports and really the basics that I grew up as uh, completing as, as a baseball player and the, the different drills that Mac has completed throughout her uh, short or short softball career up to this point. So again, we hope you enjoy and we hope you, you get some ideas through these, these short drills that we're going to demonstrate and we wish you the best of luck and have fun. All right, we're going to start with basic throwing drills. And again, these drills are really meant to be progressive. We're going to start breaking down simple throwing motions and as we go drill by drill, we've got about four drills that we're going to demonstrate today. These drills are going to be progressive in nature to where we're going to start simple and then finally end with our final throwing motion. So the first drill we're going to start with, my partner here, Mac, is going to demonstrate. We, we just call this one the, the torso rotation. So if you're throwing into a net, if you're doing this by yourself or if you have a partner, you want to square your shoulders up uh, facing your partner. And really, you're not going to move any part of your lower body. We're just rotating our trunk or rotating our torso and releasing the ball to the net or to our partner. And when we're doing this, there's some important things to pay attention to. Go ahead, Mac, and just rotate as if you're getting ready to throw. We want our front shoulder pointed towards the net or pointed towards our target. And as we get ready to throw, we're either going to lead to the target with our elbow, which Mac is... Um, a person who likes to lead with her elbow when throwing. I prefer to lead with my glove when I'm throwing. Now this is just to help you with direction throwing to your target. So again, Mac is an elbow person. She likes to lead with the elbow. I'm more of a glove to target type person. So either one is fine. There's, there's not a wrong way to do that. And what we're looking for here is really to just rotate without moving our lower body and getting our upper body loose and throwing into the net. So when playing catch, it's really important to play catch with a purpose. And what I mean by that is rather than just going through the motions, we really want to focus and play catch with a purpose. And every time we throw a baseball, every time we throw a softball, we're throwing it to someone. We're either throwing it to first base, we're throwing it to our cutoff person, we're throwing it home. So we not only need to have good, accurate throws, but we need to make sure that they're on time and they get to our target where they need to be. So again, play catch with a purpose. I think that's really important as young players um, develop their, their careers. It's just important every time you go out to play catch, make sure that you have that purpose. So when I say that, Mac would be picking up somewhere in her target, whether it be a net, whether it be another person that she wants to throw to, she's picking out maybe that Nike sign on, that, on her partner's shirt, or she's picking up the bill of her hat, something to throw to. So make sure as we're going through these drills, we're doing it with a purpose. So we're going to go through a couple of these, and Max going to just throw the ball into the net. She's going to do that, just the, the torso rotation and release into the net. Okay, and when you're doing this, there's about, you know, depending about how far you are, it's probably 10 to 15 feet to begin with. You can always back it up once, you're, once your arm gets loose. Keep going. All right, again, we're not, we're not really utilizing our lower half here. We're just getting our upper body moving feeling ourselves get our shoulder, our elbow, or either our glove lined up with our target. We're playing good catch with purpose. All right, and again, you can go through about 10 to 15 of these until um, you're feeling like you're getting loose. And you can back up your partner, or, or Mac in this case could back up from the net to make her throws even further as she starts to loosen up her arm. Okay, so that's, that's really drill number one. Again, just rotating the torso, making sure our, our target lines, our shoulder, our elbow, or our glove are going directly to 
our target. The second drill is very similar. It's, it's a similar rotation, but we're going to start a little bit differently. So if I have my partner here, Mac, rotate, she is still throwing towards this direction. She's still throwing to her target or she's throwing to her partner. Her throwing shoulder, go ahead back, her throwing shoulder is directly pointing to the target. Okay, and in this case, she is going to start in this position, a nice athletic position, legs bent, and we're going to rotate our torso again and throw in the direction of our partner. Okay, again, this is really emphasizing just your upper body movements here. And as we do this, just like we discussed in drill number one, we want to rotate and make sure we have that elbow or that glove pointed to our target when we release the ball. So let's go ahead and give it a shot here. So it's kind of an awkward position. It's not a real natural position to be in when you're throwing, but it's really just focusing on getting that upper body loose, squaring your shoulders, and getting through the ball. When she releases the ball, we want to make sure we're really feeling that follow through too. Okay, if you have something in your pocket, that's a good reminder is when I release the ball, I want to see what's in my pocket. That is a good way of just checking, making sure that you're following through all the way when you release the ball. So this also works on a good follow through after you're throwing. Okay, we're going one more. All right, one more. All right, and again, you're gonna to wanna to do 10 to 20 of these repetitions. And again, just kind of differs um, as far as how far you wanna do it. Typically, when you're warming up, you're not past 35, 40 feet, so a pretty short distance still here to get your, your body loose. All right, throwing drill number three. We're really going to work on making sure now that we're going we're gonna to actually incorporate our lower half now. We've been really working on our torso rotation. We're really going to incorporate the lower half here and make sure that when we land prior to throwing to our partner that our arm is in the correct, proper position uh, before we release the ball. So this really is what we like to call the PowerPoint check when we're playing catch. And what the PowerPoint is, is if I'm holding the ball, throwing that direction, and I get ready to release the ball, this is my PowerPoint position. My front foot has landed, and my arm is in the correct position to throw the ball. It's not down here. It's not really high. I'm in a good position to where now if I just rotate my torso like we did in drill one and two, I should be able to be in a good throwing position. Okay, so again, what Mac is going to demonstrate here is we're going to we're going to get to the PowerPoint position where we come set and we just drop into that PowerPoint right where we actually we touch our foot down to the bottom of the ground. Our, our arm is up, ready to throw. Okay, so it looks like this. She's going to get here. She's going to stop. She's going to make sure she's in the proper position. Make sure that her elbow or her glove again is leading to the target, and then she'll rotate and release into the net. Okay, so this is drill three. I'll have her demonstrate a few. So as she drops down into the power position, her elbow is up. It's towards the target. Her arm's in a good throwing position. It's not down here. If it's down here, then if you start to rotate, your, your arm is not up in the right position, and you're not going to be as accurate as you need to be. So as she drops into that power position, she can now rotate and throw into the net. One more and stop and we'll explain one more time where you are with your checkpoints, okay? Elbow again. She likes to point with her elbow. In other cases, I like to point with my glove. Her arm is again in good position. Her elbow is above her, her armpit and she's ready to rotate and drive the ball to her target. All right, our last throwing drill of today is going to be just kind of a regular catch. We're just going to now play catch now that we've loosened up our upper body. We've checked to make sure that we're in the proper position to throw. Now we're just going to make sure we're in the right direction towards our target. And this blue line right here, this blue tape is really going to make sure that when Mac throws to her partner or throws to the net, that she's in line and she's not, she's not going off direction. We want to make sure we're going to our target, right? We have our elbow or our glove as those checkpoints. 
Now we can use our front foot, our front foot, and make sure that all those checkpoints are in line to our target, so that we can make good, consistent throws to our partner. So if Matt gets up against this blue tape, she's just now going to play catch as she typically would, getting warmed up after those drills, and we're just going to make sure her foot is not over this power line, making sure that she's keeping that good direction towards her target. So if she's in check, she's not over. We just don't want her. Now go ahead and do one incorrectly where you step over the power line and you release. So if she does, does that, she then is forced to throw across her body, which can cause arm issues, elbow issues, and obviously it's going to impact our target where we're actually looking to throw the ball. So we want to make sure we're maintaining that good, solid direction right to where we're throwing. All right, so those are four simple, really basic throwing drills that you can do, again, individually if you have a net or if you have any sort of light flight ball, you can find a wall in your backyard, a fence, or anything in a park that you can actually throw into. If you have the ability to have a partner with you, I think it's best so that you and your partner can both practice the drills back and forth. All right, now that we're done with throwing, we're going to work on some fielding drills. We've got four different fielding drills, and again, this is both um, for baseball and softball, these drills will apply to both sports. What we're really going to work on is just glove control and glove work. Again, this is going to be progressive. We're going to start with the, the really early fundamentals within the fielding position, and then we're going to get into kind of fielding and the full mechanic of fielding a ground ball and throwing it to your target. So we're going to start first with Mac on her, on her knee. She has her glove. We're going to roll simple ground balls to her. We're going to roll about five to her forehand. We're going to roll five to the middle of her body, and then we're going to roll five to her backhand. And with these drills, we're really kind of taking the throwing hand out of the picture. So she's not going to use her, her throwing hand. She's just going to work on her glove control, coming through the ball, making sure that she starts with her glove on the ground and works up and through the ball as opposed to waiting for the ball to come and then kind of having a stabbing motion towards the ball. We want to be smooth. We want that glove to start from ground up when we're fielding the ball. When the partner is actually throwing these for the drill, we want to make sure that these, these are, are ground balls that are rolling really close to the ground. We're not bouncing them so that they're tough hops at this point. We really just want to roll smooth balls to our partner so that they can just start to work with their glove and get their, their fielding under, under control before we move on to maybe a little more complicated drill. So in this, in this drill, we just call it uh, groundwork using our glove. I'm going to roll her five to her forehand, and she's going to feed it back to me. And, and you want to kind of move quick, right, so that it's, it's, it's pretty fast moving. We're getting those forehands underway. And then I'm going to move to middle. Take your, make sure you're taking your throwing, your throwing hand out of the picture. We're just working glove, coming through the ball. You can see her, her motion of her glove is coming through the ball. She's not waiting for it to get to her. She's coming through it. Now I'll work her backhand. Same thing. She's coming through the ball. She's not waiting for it. She's not stabbing at it late. She's working ground through the ball. All right, and one more. Now, as we go through that, we, we kind of shorten that drill, but I would recommend anywhere from 20 to 25 for, for each angle, your forehand, your middle, and your backhand until you're actually feeling pretty good. Um, and you can do that further away than we were so that the ball is, is taking a little bit longer of, um, of time to get to your partner. In this case, we were shortened a little bit, but and you still get the idea. The second part of this drill is now where we're going to get Mac off the knees and she's going to be in good fielding position, athletic position on her feet, on the balls of her feet. So she's going to be on her toes. And it's going to be the same drill, except she's now on her feet. So I'm going to give her five to her forehand. And she's going to do the same thing. She's coming through it. And she's not stabbing at it late. She's working ground up. I'm going to move to the middle. And again, we're just rolling the ball so there's no... No hopping, no bad hops that, that, that your partner should get here. It should be nice and smooth. Just really trying to get loosened up with our glove and really being ready to kind of move forward on to maybe a practice or a game later on. 
backhand. All right, you can see that she's bending her leg, she's getting down in a good athletic position, and she's, again, coming through the ball. That's so important. You don't want to wait for it. You want to be the one coming through the ball. One more. All right, drill number three for fielding. We're going to work on, again, the same type of glove work. Max going to be in an athletic fielding position, and instead of rolling the ball that, that kind of hugs the ground, we're going to give her a little more difficult ground ball, so it's going to start bouncing more um, more like we would see in games or practices. So again, same type of drill. I'm going to go to her forehand side. I'm going to go middle, and then I'm going to go backhand, but I'm going to bounce the ball so it's more of a tougher hop for her as she's getting ready to field. And we're going to incorporate our other hand, okay? In the first two drills, it was simply just glove work. We were taking our throwing hand out of the picture. We're going to let Mac use that in this drill so that she can feel that hop um, as we go through. So here, here we go with uh, four hands. I'm going to bounce it a little more, give her some tougher hops. Okay, one more. And then we'll move to the middle. Same thing, we're making her field hops instead of just rolling on the ground. And you can see as she fields the ball, she's funneling it to her belly button, up through her belly button, and then we transition into the throw. So it's important that we field it up through our body before we get ready to, to get into that throwing position to throw a runner out or hit our cutoff person. Okay, so now I'm gonna work backhand. And again, it's super important, especially with your backhand, that you're actually coming through the ball. You're not waiting for it, and it's not a late stab down towards the ball. A lot of times if you see that, we're too late to get to the ball, and we have that ball go by us. We've got to start from the ground up and come through it. All right, one more. All right, so once we get through those, so now we've got, um, again, we started on our knees, simple, simple rolling ground balls to forehand, middle, backhand. We had her get on her feet, we did the same thing. And then that drill number three, we just started to bounce the ball a little bit. So you can see how we're progressing through our, our routine here. The next is to really feed her short hops, okay? So a short hop is a ball that gets hit and it bounces right in front of the fielder, okay? These are, these are difficult or can be difficult ones to field. It's important that we see that short hop. And again, we're going to attack that short hop as opposed to letting it come towards us. So. We're gonna do these short hops again to her forehand, to the middle, and to the backhand. So again, these are almost line drives that land right in front of our feet and can be pretty tricky hops. So it's important to watch it all the way into your glove and make sure that that glove's down and you're working up through the ball. Okay, we'll move to the middle. And again, she's funneling up through the center of her body so that she can get ready to transition into her throw. We'll move to backhand. These are tricky. But you can see if you can see her glove action through, that's okay. If you can see her glove action through the video, she, her glove is coming through the ball. She's not just catching it, she's coming through it. I keep saying that, but it's super important, especially with short hops. And if you're a first baseman, Matt plays a little first base. A lot of times you don't get the best throws maybe from the infielders and you have to pick those balls at first base that are thrown in the dirt. So this really, this really helps with that as well. All right, so that's our fourth drill. Lastly, just to incorporate a little more body coordination, a little more conditioning, we're going to do um, a quick set of pickups. And pickups, I'm sure many of you have heard of these or have actually already done them. What I'm going to do is I've got two balls. You have a partner with two balls. We're going to remove our glove so Mac doesn't have a glove. She's going to get an athletic position. I'm going to roll her a ball this way. She's going to feel it, throw it back to me, and I'm going to make her move the other direction. Go get that ball, feed it back to me, and I'm going to keep her moving. And we'll do about 5 to 10, but typically a set of pickups is about 25. And you're going to get tired, and it's hard, and you start to get feel like your legs are getting really heavy as you're sliding through. Uh, but it's really good conditioning. It really forces you to hustle and get to the ball, make sure you're centering it up, and then making good feeds back to your, your partner. But it's, it's also really good conditioning. So we'll try to, to give our best example um, right here. You can see I'm not waiting for her to feel. I'm throwing so I, she is constantly moving. 
feeding it back to me, and she's getting low when she feels. And if we actually did 25, it would be pretty exhausting. Okay, so she does a lot of these during practice. I used to do a lot of these growing up playing baseball. It's just a good, easy way to, to mix conditioning with hand-eye coordination and good baseball and softball fundamentals. All right, now that we've gone through throwing drills, fielding drills, we're going to move on to hitting drills. And again, baseball and softball. Um, baseball and softball swings, there's a lot of different philosophies out there, a lot of different teaching techniques. We're just going to go through some basics, um, some basic T work, and then we'll move along into some soft toss work. Again, this can be done by yourself if you have a T and a net, or you can even have a T and you can be at a park and hit all the balls that you have in a bucket and then go retrieve the balls. You don't necessarily need a partner for this. If you do have a partner, that's great because they can kind of speed up the process and feed the tee. And then as we get into soft toss, you're obviously going to need that second person to, to pitch those soft tosses. Okay, so the first drill we're going to work on with, with hitting is really just getting to the contact position. So if Matt gets in her stance, okay, and again, stances can be different. They are different. It's whatever is a comfortable position for you as a hitter. She's going to have her legs bent. Um, she's, her weight is on her, on her backside. If she were to lift her front leg, she's still going to feel all the weight on her, her back leg. And really the first drill is focusing on getting to the contact point. So if you can just demonstrate what it looks like, what I mean by getting to contact, that's contact position right there. So she's made contact with the ball and she's stopping in this drill. Again, we're trying to be progressive within the, these drills and the contact position is the first part of the, the ball making, the, the bat making contact with the ball. So we're going to stop there. She's going to hit a couple balls into the net, finishing right at that contact position. I don't want her to extend. I don't want her to finish her swing. When she gets to that contact position, we'll look at a couple things within her mechanics and identify what's, what's being done properly. So if I feed her a ball right here, she is, again, I want you to, to swing through contact, stop at contact, and then hold your contact position. Okay, so she's made contact, she's here, she's got good extension through her, her lower body, her lower body, she's got all of her weight is still on her backside, and she's getting ready to extend through the ball, and she's got a good bat angle. We teach, and again, this is where it comes down to different techniques and mechanics, we teach a little bit more trajectory within our swings. So a lot of times, um, people prefer coming down on the ball and chopping down at the ball. Um, we've always been taught and our, and our drills to kind of come through the ball, feel that launch to create a launch angle so that we're not hitting the ball necessarily in the ground, but we're driving the ball line drive styles to the gaps and if we're lucky over the wall. Um, so we're really trying to teach good launch angle and you'll see that if you can get the contact one more time here, Matt, where her launch angle is. So you can see that the bat is somewhat down. So when the ball's coming off of it, we have a little bit of trajectory. It's not down, it's not coming down on the ball to where it's driving the ball into the ground. We're really trying to teach up and through that ball, creating that good launch of the ball over the infield, into the gaps, hopefully over the, over the wall. Okay, and she's, her head is down. I'm gonna give you one more so you can identify some things within your swing. Okay, so she, she made it to contact, her head's down on the ball still. Her weight is still not really shifted into uh, her front side, it's still back on her, her back side where she can accelerate and um, explode with some power into her swing. So one more contact, and she's going to try, really the goal here is when we're, we're doing this, we're trying to drive balls with that upward trajectory into the top of the net, and she wants to drive it up the middle. We have a tendency, or she has a tendency sometimes to pull it to the, the right side of the net in her case which tells me she's pulling out with her shoulder a little bit where we want to stay straight through right over that pitcher's head with that, with that swing. Okay, that one was good. It was right up the middle. She's got a good launch angle. Her head was down and her backside is where it needs to be. All right, now as we progress into drill number two, I would recommend we have about 15 balls here, maybe doing two rounds. So you're getting yourself a set of 30 um, into that contact position. You're really feeling yourself um, contact that ball and, and, and identifying it's a good checkpoint for yourself to see if you're doing everything correctly up to that point. 
Now we're going to go in through extension. So she's going to go past the contact point into extension, which is kind of the next step in the drill. And really what we're looking for here is as she comes through the ball, she makes contact and then she's going to extend through the ball. We really teach not rolling your hands. So her top hand right here, her being left handed, we want to make sure that she doesn't roll her top hand at contact. If that happens, if she makes contact and then immediately rolls that hand where her palm is down, that's going to force that ball to be hit in the ground. Okay, so we want to see with her being left handed, her top hand is her left hand. As she makes contact, her palm is facing the ceiling or facing the sky. And we want that position as long as we can until our body tells us we have to roll our hands. Okay, that's going to help again with that trajectory and that launch angle that we're trying to teach. So in this drill, she's going to go past contact. She's going to just keep extension. She's not going to roll her hands. So she's going to get to the farthest point she can without rolling her hands and hold that. Okay, you can see she's through contact. She still has not rolled that top hand. Okay, the palm is up to the sky. Her next movement would be to rotate and turn that hand over. A lot of times when we look at um, younger players swinging, you see that back real quick? We see at contact right here, right after contact, that bat or that palm rolls over. Okay, and that just creates almost that top spin on that, on that ball as we hit it. We're just rolling right over it and we're not giving it a chance to, to get to the gaps or get to the outfield. If we stay palm up right here as long as we can, then that gives us a better chance to get the ball out of the infield, into the gaps, lucky if we get it out of the, out of the park. But if we roll our hands, we're not going to get there. So this drill is really to try to keep that palm up as long as possible. Okay, and you can see the angle. I don't know if you caught that on camera, but that ball was traveling up right below this black tape right here. That's what we're looking for. Okay, and she still hasn't rolled. That's, about, that's, that's her saying right there is as far as she can go until her body forces her to naturally roll her hands. Okay, but she's well beyond that contact position. She's extended. She's got good launch angle. Then she's going to roll. Okay, so one more time, just getting to that extension without rolling over. Very good. Okay, so we, we and again, she can do checkpoints. She can make sure her backside is where it needs to be. She can make sure her head's still on the ball and that she hasn't rolled her hands. Okay, so that's kind of step two within the progression. Step three is really just, now we're going to go through and we're going to finish our swing, which is going to be a regular T-swing. We're going to make sure we're good at contact, good through extension, and then she'll finish by obviously having to roll our hands. So we'll go through a couple full swings here. Blooper. We'll go through a couple full swings here. Okay. So again, her goal, what she's thinking about, rather than seeing the ball fly to the corner of the net, she wants to drive that ball up the middle with a good launch angle with some good trajectory. So her goal is right in this region of the net. She pulled that one a little bit so we saw it go to that corner. What that means typically with max swing is she's pulling her shoulder. Okay, so she's pulling her shoulder, her bat's getting ahead of her, and she's taking her bat out of the zone really quickly as opposed to staying through the ball, up the middle, and driving it up and over the pitcher. Do one more, scoot a little closer to the tee, and you should be able to get it up the middle here with a good launch. Okay, so after you do your contact, after you do your, your sets with extension, then it's a full swing. Okay, so those are again our, our drills that can be done individually by yourself. Um, we're going to now kind of incorporate those same three drills doing soft toss. So if you have a partner, after you do your tee work, you can do soft toss. So we'll get into that in just a minute. All right, so now that we've worked through our tee drills, we're going to do the same exact three drills that we just went over, but with a partner um, doing soft toss. So again, I'll get into position to do soft toss. Mac is going to do a couple swings to contact, like we did on our first drill. So she checks her launch angle. She checks her backside. She ensures that her palm is facing up. 
more. All right, and really the goal in this drill is really to get that good trajectory. We're looking for the top of the net. Right here, we're making sure that our palm's up. We're trying to drive that ball up the middle with a little bit of launch angle. Do a couple more contact. All right, so then once we've done through contact, just like we did in drill two, now we're gonna go through extension. Okay, so she's gonna go through the same thing. I'm gonna give her some soft toss pitches. She's gonna go through contact. And again, this was how long can we keep our palm up to the sky so that we're not rolling over balls and hitting them, um, in her case, to first base or second base. Okay, so here we go with a couple to where she's gonna to get to extension without rolling over. And that's as far as she can go until our hands naturally roll over. Two more. And again, it's an opportunity as a hitter to kind of just freeze after you're done and make sure all the checkpoints, you're hitting all the right spots within your swing. Whoops, that was my fault. All right, she can check her hand, she can check her, her weight, her foot, make sure that everything's in check when going through that drill. Once you go through that one, you kind of move forward then into a full swing. So if I give her, I've got four balls left, we'll give her four full swings into the net. And again, her goal is to drive that ball right here. So it's good to have an approach as a hitter. You're, you're focused, you're looking to do something. Her goal as a hitter right now is she wants to come through in these soft toss pitches and drive them up the middle with good trajectory. So we don't want to really see balls down here in the corner in her case, because that's what she has a tendency to do is to pull that front shoulder out of the zone. We want to stay lined up with the pitcher. We want to create that good launch angle. We want to keep our palm up at contact and drive it up the middle. So those are the, the six drills, I guess, if you break it down. We did the three drills off the tee, three drills off a of soft toss. And again, if you can do those, you can do those at home. If you don't have a net, you can certainly take a bucket of balls and do it at a park. You just have to go pick up the balls after you hit them. But um, it can certainly be done by yourself. Uh, but we do recommend if you have an opportunity to, to have a partner, it's a great drill for two. All right, now we're going to transition into pitching. Now, pitching with baseball, pitching with softball, different. Right? With baseball, we have an overhand delivery. Softball is the underhand delivery. So we're going to have four different drills that I'm going to go over, two for baseball and two for softball. So the first drill that I'm going to do with baseball is what I call the rocker drill. Okay, And a lot of this has already been incorporated um, within our throwing drills that we've covered earlier. As a pitcher, it's important to be in an athletic position. If you think about it, pitching is very similar to hitting as far as how we sit up. You have to be in an athletic position. If I'm going to be a hitter, I'm standing in an athletic position, my knees are bent, and I'm ready to deliver with my weight on my backside. Pitching is very similar. I'm here, if I'm coming set, my weight's still on my backside. It's a very similar stance um, from, from pitching and hitting. Okay, so with the rocker drill, we're really emphasizing proper weight transfer as we deliver the ball. So we went over some trunk rotations earlier during our throwing drills. This is pretty similar, okay? But we are gonna incorporate our lower half. So if I come set as a pitcher, I'm, athletic, I'm in an athletic stance, my weight right now is all on my backside, okay? And the rocker drill is really emphasizing we wanna shift our weight, shift it back, and then deliver. So as we move weight back and forth, we know where it needs to be and we can feel where it needs to be before we deliver to home plate. So again, here's an example. I'm coming set, I rock forward. So I feel all the weight transfer to my front side. I rock backwards and then I deliver. Okay, so again, it's an awkward kind of positioning, but it's really a drill to feel where your weight needs to be so that it can transfer properly and on time to have that good um, release and good power delivering towards home plate. So if I were to do it quicker, I come set, I rock forward, backwards, and then push and deliver. Okay, now there's really two versions of the rocker drill. If you can see my feet right here, 
I'm going to come set. Again, I'm going to rock forward, backwards, and push and release. Okay, in the first version, my foot is on the ground. I want it to stay on the ground just to feel my full rotation. Okay, so version one, as I come set, I rock forward, I rock backwards, I push forward, I release, and my toe stays on the ground. Okay, again, if you want to do that throwing into a net, throwing to your partner, throwing against a wall at a park, you can do that. Version two of the drill is very similar. We're just going to allow our body to finish our delivery, which is the last piece where your foot actually naturally comes up when you're releasing. So version two is I come set, I rock forward, I rock backwards, I get all my weight back, and I release, and my foot comes up as it would if I were on the mound pitching in a game. You're going to have such force as a baseball pitcher that your leg's naturally going to come up. It's never really just going to stay on the ground like it did when we were going over version one of the rocker drill. All right, one more time. Version one, forward, backwards, release, foot stays on the ground. Version two, forward, backwards, follow through, and let your leg lift up naturally. All right, second baseball pitching drill is the towel drill. This is probably something you're familiar with. What you'll need for this drill is just a basic washcloth dish towel. And what I like to do in this drill is I like to fold it in half and then fold it in half one more time. And I use the towel or I hold the towel with my index and my middle finger in between both so that I can grip it. And we're really gonna be going through some snaps as if we're throwing a ball, we're actually throwing the towel. So again, that's my grip, my index finger and my middle finger right in between. And we want to just make sure we hold on to the towel as we go through our, our pitching windup. Okay, there's, there's several different drills that you can do with the towel. Um, the reason I like the towel drill is it allows you to really hone in on your mechanics as a pitcher without the wear and tear of throwing a baseball. Okay, as we throw baseballs, as we throw baseballs as a young kid, and then we get older, we keep throwing, it takes a, a wear, there's some wear and tear on your shoulder, your elbow. This is a great opportunity to not have that wear and tear, but still kind of develop your mechanics as you go through. Okay, so with the towel drill, there, again, there's several different variations. I'm just going to focus on one today. Oftentimes, and what I was taught, was to put a bucket out front of where you would release the ball or where you would finish your delivery. Okay, so I'm pretty far away. From the bucket right now. I'm going to get into my mechanics. I'm going to start my windup. I'm going to deliver and I'm going to hit the bucket with my towel. Okay, again, it's just giving me an opportunity to make sure I'm in the proper power position, like we talked about in our throwing drills, and then I'm following through and I'm releasing the ball out front. We don't want to release the ball back here because then we're that, that much further away from home plate. If I'm going to throw a baseball towards home plate. I want to release out front. So what I just explained with this bucket drill, I'm going to show you a different variation because I don't necessarily like hitting the bucket because it's so far out front. And when you deliver the ball as a pitcher, rarely, if ever, are you releasing the ball that far down. Right? We're releasing the ball as pitchers out front, but not so low. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my partner, Mac. And I'm going to have her stand right there and just hold her glove out where my release point would be, which is a little more natural than all the way down at this bucket. So if I get into, if you can slide over back right behind the bucket, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going, to, I'm going to release towards her glove. I'm not going all the way down to the bucket. I want my release point to be right out front where it naturally is. Okay, so again, you don't necessarily need a partner if you can find a windowsill in your house, something that fits your release point a little more naturally than going all the way down to a bucket would be great. So again, this is what it looks like. I've got my grip with my towel, and I'm just working on my mechanics and feeling my towel snap, whatever I'm hitting, in this case, my partner's glove, and going through. Great drill to work on without having to throw the ball. Okay, last drill of the day. We're gonna now cover some softball pitching. We got our baseball pitching in. Now we're gonna cover some softball pitching drills. I'm bringing my partner back into the mix here. 
because she is a softball pitcher. We're going to start with what we call just basic arm circles. So our arm circle in the softball delivery is this, is this motion right here. Okay, it's up. We want that big, long, straight arm circle. The more it's long, the more it's straight, the more whip we have towards the, the end of the delivery. Okay, so really to kind of focus and get yourself to getting that long, straight arm circle, we can use a simple washcloth and find a wall in your house and you're going to face the wall. I'm going to give this back to Mac. I'm going to have her face the wall. And we're going to act as if this is the ball. Okay, she's going to go through. And this is her arm circle. Okay, a lot of times in youth pitching with softball, you'll see arm circles get here. You'll see them not be so tall. And what happens is when that arm comes around, it's not in the right position to release the ball. So the more we can get that tall, long, straight arm circle, it's going to be... It's going to be where it needs to be at release, and you're going to be a lot more accurate within the strike zone as a pitcher. So then, this is really just to feel that long, straight arm circle. So as she goes through it, you can see how straight her arm is, and she's just keeping it nice, long, and it's forcing her to reach up so that she has that good, lengthy arm circle when she gets ready to deliver. So again, this could be something that you can do really easily, maybe for two, three minutes, and just feel your arm motion, how it needs to be when you're getting ready to deliver as a softball pitcher. The second drill is what we have, what we call the power line drill. Okay, so we have, if you can see right here, a piece of tape. That is what we're calling, this is what we're calling our power line. So as a softball pitcher, when you go through your mechanics, it's very important, it's very similar to what we talked about in our throwing drills earlier, to not cross the power line. You do not want to throw across your body. So if I'm pitching towards the camera here, I want to make sure that I've got that clean straight line to allow my arm to come through that lane towards the catcher. If I were to go across the power line, I don't have that clean lane to the pitcher, or excuse me, to the catcher anymore, and now I've got to, I've got to throw across my body to, get, to try to get the ball to the strike zone. So in this case we have Mac who's really close to her front toe, is on the power line or right next to it. When she finishes, we want to make sure it's either right on top of that line or just to the just to the side of it. We don't want to see that front foot cross the power line. So if she, we're going to let her go ahead and release the ball here. Okay, so we check her foot. It's in pretty good position. It's straight to the catcher. She's not across the power line to where it would cause her to throw across her body. We'll give her a couple more. Okay, again, she didn't cross the power line, which is good. This is really more just to make sure you have proper direction as you're, as you're pitching towards home plate. Okay, so again, right, right up next to that power line, but never across it. So important to remember as you're going through your pitching mechanics, you can do this in front of a mirror. We don't have a mirror right now, but we have a tall mirror at home to where we can, she can put a piece of tape on the carpet and she can watch herself, watch her mechanics and make sure that that foot is never going across that power line. Really building that muscle memory so every time that we deliver, we have that clean lane for our arm to get to the catcher. Okay, so it's very important, but something else, just a moderation to that, to that drill is to put a, a um, or a modification to the drill is just to put a, a mirror right here so you can watch yourself actually Pitch the ball and you can check your feet in front of the mirror. Third drill and final drill of the day is the rocker drill for softball. We did the rocker drill for baseball. There is actually a rocker drill for softball pitchers as well. So what, what we're going to do here, and this really just involves, again, weight transfer and good leg strength. As pitchers, it's important to be powerful with your lower half. That's where a lot of your power and a lot of your velocity comes from is the strength and, and explosiveness within your lower half, within your legs. So what she's going to do is she's going to come set as, as a pitcher, and with her stride leg, which is her left leg, if you were left-handed, your stride leg would be your right foot. In this case, she's going to come balanced, and she's going to feel herself rock back and forward, just kind of like we did with the baseball rocker drill. Um, she's really feeling that back leg um, hold all of her weight, and then she's going to stride out, make sure she's not on, uh, across the power line when she delivers. So she'll rock twice. Go ahead. One, two, 
And then on her third rock, she'll finish. Okay, and then she also has the check to her power line, which she didn't cross, which was very good. So we'll do one more. And again, you can do 10 to 15 repetitions, and this can be part of your, your warm-up routine if you're a pitcher, just to really feel your weight transfer. You're really trying to emphasize and make sure that you're including the weight transfer properly throughout your delivery. So again, she'll rock once, twice, and then on the third rock, she'll deliver and make sure that she's not past that power line, which she isn't. Um, just another simple drill that you can do at home. Um, those are three really easy, simple drills that don't take a lot, maybe just some tape. Again, if you have a wall that you can throw against, you can do that. Um, and that first drill that we did, you would just you could use a bedroom wall, a basement wall, um, a, a fence if it's tall enough to really just feel that arm circle. So um, those are our softball pitching drills. Thanks for joining us and to stay updated on class schedules and program offerings. Be sure to follow DPR on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and visit denvergov.org recreation.